I'm Serena Fazan, taking a risk, making a difference, and changing the course of your life. Remarkable stories from people defying the odds. You're listening to On the Record. Hi, everyone. I'm Serena Fazan, a journalist, producer, and the host of On the Record. Thank you so much for joining me for this podcast episode. I'm here with Scott Grow, and joining us via Zoom from oh, um, Idaho, right? Lee Spinagle of All Racket Sports. Nailed it. Thank you. Goodness, because let's go on the record and let's get started. And we're talking about something that is so unique to the United States, sure. but really not in the world, and no. it's Padel. It's, it is Padel. So it is a, a sport that is immensely popular overseas. Uh, it's a racket sport. I'll give you a little background and tell you Please. a little bit about the play. It's played on a court similar to a tennis court that's about a third the size of the court. But the unique thing about Padel is the court is surrounded with glass. And you can play off the glass. So the result is, a, is our rallies that last a long time, a lot of strategy in the game, a lot of moving your, moving your opponent around the court. But it's, it's a really – it's kind of the – I'll, I'll steal Lee's line and call it the Swiss Army knife of all of racket sports. It's elements of squash, tennis, pickleball, platform tennis. Um, they're all together in this one unique package that is hugely popular. To give an example, there's over 16,000 courts, padel courts in Spain. Wow. It's the second most popular sport in Spain next to soccer. It's huge in all the Scandinavian countries. It's, it's on fire in Sweden and Italy and France, UK, and we get, come across the ocean here in the United States and nobody's heard of it. It's crickets. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Like I was looking at some YouTube videos on it, 2.5 million views, 3 million views. I mean, it was crazy. So Lee, all right, why, why, ha, ha, why have we not caught on? Well, the US market is the largest in the world and there's a lot of, there's a lot of competition. Um, and what has been done in the past is some folks that have played this sport overseas want to come and open up some courts in the U.S. and think that everyone's going to know about it and, and, and play it. You have to play it to love it. We only have 80-some courts in the United States, um, and it needs to be cultivated. We need to get player trials, and you know, that's what we did this past weekend at the uh, SVB um, tournament is to get people on the court having fun and, and playing the sport. Once you have people play it, you're going to see this, this – um, hockey stick um, graph of, of growth and excitement in the U.S. So I, I, I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but what is SVB for people who may not know? Go ahead, Scott. Uh, SVB is a world-class, brand-new tennis and fitness facility in Zephyr Hills. So right up the road in Tampa is a world-class facility, uh, and they have four beautiful Padel courts, and it's probably one of the, the nicest Padel facility in the country right now. Uh, it's it's very premier. So I was going to ask you though, like even in the entire country, there's not too many of uh, the Padel courts. So how great is it that these courts are in our backyard in Florida? Now our podcast goes like all over. Sure the country, but if you could just describe the area that it's in okay. and what it took to build these courts. Well, it took a, the, the SVB Tennis Center is a, is a unique project. It's a collaboration with the city of Zephyr Hills, um, a, a tennis pro by the name of Pascal Collard from my area in, in Philadelphia area who, who came down to open this, this center, and the, uh, the Vandenberg family. And it's a very unique story of, of uh, Todd Vanderberg's daughter who had passed away in a tragic car accident, who was a, a, a big tennis player. And this, this tennis center, uh, with, with the collaboration of the three I mentioned, is, was built in her name. So it's, it's a heartwarming story. I was at the grand opening two months ago and uh, almost a, not a dry eye in the house. But it's amazing that this has come here. It's only about 30 miles north of Tampa, so it's easily accessible to a lot of people. It's also a big upcoming area, so much construction going on there. And we are proud that they installed four Padel courts, and they're right up front and center. The first thing you see when you drive into the center are the, are the Padel courts. Our hearts certainly go out to that family yeah. who lost their daughter. Lee, were you, were you going to say something about? I was. One thing to add about that, 
uh, and this just goes for any facility, but specifically at that facility, when it was first designed, the Padel courts were kind of in the center or towards the back. Once they, once they saw that, as Scott was saying, once you see these courts, which are glass and steel, they're like an instant upgrade to a facility, just beautiful to look at, in addition to the fun of the sport and the game and the social aspect of it. Um, so they're right up front, as Scott had said. One thing that Scott hasn't mentioned is that he actually designed those courts uh, here in the United States. Um, and that's a kind of a great segue to talk about those courts in particular, in addition to the sport. Yeah, modesty aside, come on, dude. Let's talk about that. Like, like, I come on. I mean, that. I mean, as you know, that was. Thank you, thank you for bringing that to light. So, tell us what it took. Well, one of the things that we want to do when we bring the court, to, the sport to the United States is, and with our with our American sports culture, we want we want to make this sport our own, right? We don't want to be playing somebody else's sport. We want to make it a, an American sport. So, one of the things we wanted to do was be able to have the ability to build courts here in the United States. Now, we do bring courts in from our uh, our parent company overseas, all for Padel which is Adidas sponsored, and we bring those courts in in a container and set those up. But we also have the ability in doing now we have courts built. So the courts that are at uh, SVB were manufactured in Lancaster County by our Amish craftsmen. And uh, we all, all that, and we shipped them down here, uh, set them up with our crew. And now we are playing on 100% American courts. And you actually, um, you brought up the Amish... Uh, craftsman, because you you are in town from Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I have a, a place in Lancaster, so these these guys are in my backyard. I've known them well. They're a wonderful fab steel fabrication shop. Hi, Amos, <laughs> uh, and and uh, they're a great group group of guys to work with. And we've we've worked now two years together on just making that design better, stronger, more sleek looking, and and it's uh, we're very proud of it. So let's go back, guys, to Padel. Now, you have a Padel racket that you brought. Weapon. Weapon. Okay. It's very, um, it's very <laughs> light. Some people are just listening to this. Some people mm -hmm. are watching it. But it's very, very light. It looks mm -hmm. similar to a racquetball, right? I mean, uh, uh, right? <laughs> it, it is. It is uh, a lot of differences, but uh, it's... Unlike a traditional racket, no strings, of course. So we have we have the holes, but really, what there's a lot of technology, believe it or not, that goes into these these rackets. Uh, it's an EVA foam and then a shell with a, a, a structural skeleton around it. The shell is usually fiberglass. This in this case, it's carbon fiber. So uh, these are these are our Adidas rackets. There's what Lee or how many Padel racket manufacturers are there? There's probably twelve in, or so in the world. And wow, it's some it somewhat mimics the the, the tennis manufacturing. So mm -hmm. the the big players in tennis are also the big players in in padel. Interesting to note. In addition to that, you know, we our parent company uh, has the Adidas uh, Padel worldwide license. So we have the we have the ability to produce Adidas rackets, Adidas accessories, Adidas balls, Adidas courts. But we really have a fine tuned product development team over in Spain that works really, really hard every year to come out with a fantastic line, as other companies do, uh, as other companies do. But, you know, we're really proud of the Adidas name, the ability to use it and our, and our team in Spain for their, for their production and, and uh, research on different types of rackets and materials. And I was going to mention that because you're wearing an Adidas shirt, so is Lee. And I, I and I was going to going to mention that what a great company to back this sport. They've they've been wonderful, absolutely. So talking, so speaking of the racket again. Oh, Lee, were you going to say something? I, well, I was going to say something. The interesting thing about Adidas, I mean, Adidas is a lifestyle brand, so we all know that it, it covers all sorts of sports, um, which is unique from maybe some of the other players that are in the market. So. Not only do we have to, as a, as a team, produce these fabulous high-end end rackets, uh, it, we have to go with the Adidas lifestyle. And, and kind of it, it's fun to be in there because when we wear, I mean, my wife's tired of me wearing Adidas clothes all around, but I, you know, it's, it's cool. It, it's the cool kid on the block. I know. I was going to say, like, there is something cool about that. We won't mention the other brands right now. Like, we're just sticking to Adidas. But to have Adidas back... Padel and back certain branding and you know like as you said you know your wife may be tired of you wearing it but you look pretty cool in it 
And your shirt you. is really Appreciate great. They match your glasses. <laughs> I know. I actually, do. I don't know if Scott does. They match your glasses. So, all right. What if, so, and I see clearly Adidas is on the racket. What does a racket like this cost though? And what is the cost behind Padel? Like how much, how much money would you have to invest um, to enjoy the sport? Well, the rackets range are they're similar to what a tennis racket would cost. Our our entry level Adidas rackets retail in the eighty dollar range on up to this is a four hundred dollar racket. Wow, and we really? actually have the <laughs> the new the new line we have a, I think we have a five hundred dollar racket in, in the new line. The interesting thing about it with Adidas being a lifestyle brand is this is a, uni- a unique statistic that I always like to reference is that the average tennis player swaps out a tennis racket every six to seven years. The average Padel player swaps out a Padel racket every th- less than three years. And I mean, that's huge from a man, one reason why manufacturers love it, but it's, it's a trendy thing. You always, in Padel, it's a younger demographic that people always want to have the best, the brightest, the newest. They, they swap out a perfectly good racket for the new, the new model of the next year sort of thing. So you see, there's a lot of that with the shoes and accessories and everything. And that's one of the reasons I think it's so enticing to Adidas and other manufacturers to want to be involved, especially as the movement comes here to the United States. So let's talk about that for a minute, because it's not just the racket. What else does someone need to play Padel? Like, and for women, do you want a cool Padel outfit? I mean, come on. Well, let's I can't be, imagine, let's be real Serena, here. I can't imagine you <laughs> stepping on the on the tennis court in a pair of baggy sweatpants and, and you know. So yes, uh, it, you can. You don't need anything. The only thing you need is a racket and and a lot and some 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 good some good energy, right? But. Yeah, a couple bucks for balls, a nice, nice pair of shoes, uh, you know, a cute little top, and yeah, you can, you could do this. Wait, listen, like, I, listen, <laughs> anytime you can implement fashion into anything. Well, I mean, you want to be the coolest looking Padel player around or the cutest. Well, think I about say. think about the way the game is played. The game isn't just played on the court. There, it's such a social sport, kind of like pickleball is all the rage. Well, the reason pickleball is so is so fascinating and so uh, so popular right now i think it's as much as the game it's the social aspect i was at there the svb has eight pickleball courts and hosted a, a pickleball tournament the week before i got there there were i don't know maybe 16 to 20 people playing at a time and 100 people sitting off the court just chatting and talking and doing all that well padel's the same way so you need your cute little outfit, not for when you're playing, but when you're standing off the court drinking a beer. If you go to the to the Padel clubs in Spain, every one of them will have a bar. They'll have music playing. It's a social event. It's not just going to the court and playing your match and walking, going home. So, Serena, it, it reminds me of um, maybe tennis in the 70s for those that are old enough uh, listening to this or watching this, where you would go to the club and, and hang out. So picture like the cool, updated place to hang out. It, everyone's not wearing white. You can see what you know, Scott's wearing, bright neon colors. You can see the rackets are bright neon colors. So it's really the cool place to go and hang out as the social event all day long. And, um, I, you know, it, it's so perfect right what, now, One thing too. I wanted, wanted to add, you said, what do you need? And this is kind of where all racket sports comes in and, and our partners in Spain is we need we need facilities and we need courts. You need places like Sarah Vandenberg, you know, tennis center to – commit to building these courts so people can play and have fun and have this social experience and kind of get, get back to the the heyday of racket sports in the 1970s so you know what what one thing that i i kid about for our market our our business plan is we have 80 some courts in the u.s scott mentioned there's over 16,000 in spain so you pick a number between 80 and 16,000 and that's the number of courts we want to build <laughs> We absolutely do. And, you know, um, we're going to go to a break in a couple of minutes. But when we come back from the break, I want to talk about the courts and, you know, the comparison between overseas and here. But with the courts here, the SVB, you said, right? Mm -hmm. How can people play here? Do they do they pay a membership fee? Do they pay, uh, you know, uh, a flat fee or how does it work? Well, that's the other really nice thing about SVB is I think our our average of what we see to give you an idea. uh, Padel is a pay-for-play thing. So all around the world in the model, you're 
people play, pay court time to get on a court. SVB is a little unique, and because it's a relationship with the city, the cost to get on a court at SVB is is extremely low. I think they're, they're, you can get a Padel only membership for for fifty bucks a month. That's well, that's, that's 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 one hour of court time, so and you can play unlimited there for that. So it's really special setup for anybody here here in the area or within an hour of SVB to drive over there and play. They'll have events and things like that that they can also take part in to learn the sport and then to play is is very inexpensive. And they're outside, right? Yeah. These courts are all outside, which right now, as we all know, so many of us, most of us, even appreciate the outdoors more than we, we ever have in this unprecedented time mm -hmm. that we are living in. All right. On that note, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back. Aren't we having so much fun? We're talking, oh, yeah. we're talking Padel, we're talking sports, <laughs> and we're talking fashion. What more can we ask for? All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Core Shorts. Me being a professional hockey player, I have had my share of groin injuries in my life. When they showed me this product, I said, oh my God, this is the future. These shorts are exactly what they're meant for, to create some support throughout your pelvis. It's an amazing product. It's not only for hockey, it's for any kind of sports, recreational, postpartum, women's after their pregnancy, need support throughout their pelvis. These shorts are creating that support throughout their pelvis. So it could be a mailman, it could be a fireman, it could be someone working in their gardens doing anything. If you're active, you need some support throughout your pelvis. That's where Core Shorts were designed. For more information and to place an order, visit coreshorts.com. Hi, everyone. Okay, welcome back. We are talking about Padel. I'm joined by Scott, with Scott Grow and Lee Spinagle from Idaho via Zoom. All right, we've been talking about these amazing courts. There's about, there's not very many in the U.S. yet in comparison to overseas. Less than 80 in the whole All right. entire U.S. So guys, what is it going to take to bring these courts to to the U.S.? I mean, how how are we going to build the popularity? Well, one thing, the, 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 the simple, easy answer, all we need to do is get people on a court. I've seen it a thousand times. As soon as you get somebody on the court and they have the opportunity to play and they see how easy they can go from, from not having any, even if you don't have any racket experience at all, a simple, a little instruction, playing padel five, 10 minutes, you can be playing at a level where you will enjoy the sport. Unlike tennis, where it takes a commitment, a lot of lessons to get to the board where you can rally back and forth. Padel is not that way. I was, last night I was playing with two people that picked up a racket for the first time and we started, I started feeding them some balls and within a half hour, they're, they're thinking, well, when can we come out again? When, when is it, can, are you available Wednesday night? And so we just have to get people on a court. Now that's the tricky part. Only 80 courts in the country. How do we get, how do we get there? Right, Lee. How do we get there? Let, let me add to that. Well, thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, kind of um, join in on what Scott said. We, you know, we say it's, it's easy to learn and hard to master. So as Scott was saying, you can pick up a racket and even if you're dressed as, uh, you know, in a, in a cool outfit, you can begin to play within five to 10 minutes. So that's, it's easy to learn. So you have instant gratification. Then it's hard to master. The point about that is people want to keep coming back again and again and playing and taking lessons and doing all this fun. They just want to be on the court. I mean, Scott didn't know how to play this when, when he started. And, and now, as he said, he's just one of the experts, you know, probably the number one player in central Pennsylvania. Um, <laughs> if not Lancaster County. Uh, so the, the point is, what we see here is when people play Padel, they want to play pickleball. They want to play tennis. They want to play platform tennis. So as our as the name of our company, All Racket Sports is, our theory is that the more people play racket sports, we're not competing against one another as a racket sports. We're competing against other sports or screen time or people sitting on, on the sofa. So what, what Scott says is we need facilities to kind of take that lunge, take that, that belief in faith that let's build some courts and it's actually going to grow their business. And there's an investment in the courts. There's no doubt about it. Pickleball, you can put lines down on any flat surface and play and, and have a great time. Padel is an industry built around the courts because once you build a court, everyone needs a racket. Everyone wants to buy balls. Everyone wants to take a lesson. Everyone wants to have one more beer or one more sandwich when they come to the facility. So it's really taking some risks on the facility side to, to build courts. So, Lee, let me ask you, 
How did we help them? Yes, that's exactly, that was my next question. See, he's-, he, he's, he's he, One of the things that we're doing, and then there's a, a follow-up, um, um, you know, Scott, we did the first ever pop-up Padel uh, court in Philadelphia, calling it Padelphia. So Scott's now running that in charge, owns that, where we have, we put two courts in a public facility, in a public park in downtown Philadelphia, in a city where no one, I say no one, 99.9% .9 of the people in Philadelphia had no idea what the sport is. And Scott and, and, our, and our head promotions guy, marketing guy, Marcos Del Pilar, have just hit it out of the park there. And I'll let Scott pick up on, on some things that are going on in Philadelphia. But back to the trial, that's what we're doing. I, I give you an example. So we, it's, it's a matter of getting people on the courts. Well, there we, there we finally had courts where we were able to get people mm -hmm. on the courts and give it a try. And I was texting with my wife, uh, the, the uh, a few days ago while I'm enjoying Who is, this by the way, a, a morning anchor for NPR in Philadelphia, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's so. She's a pretty cool chick. Too. Well, she's also, she's also <laughs> more importantly, she's a big fan of Padel. Okay. Big fan of Padel. She's married to you, yeah, Scott. So, so yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. Please so, continue. Yeah. So, uh, she sent me pictures. It was 27 degrees out. Uh, she went down to look at to check on the courts, uh, and they do some some actually do some rowing classes on the courts. There were people. There both courts were full. People were lined up waiting to play. 27 degrees out, and we we need we need more courts in Philadelphia is what we need. And it's it once it starts the ball starts going. All you have to do is get people on a court. Let them try the game. They'll come back again and again and again. It's that much fun. So how, what, you know, give your company a plug too. So you guys built the courts, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us, tell us what you guys are doing. Like with all the courts um, now, how many of them have you built? Have you built all of them? Not all of them. I mean, there's, there are a lot there. Uh, we found a lot of courts at some private residences uh, that a Spanish billionaire decided he wanted a Padel <laughs> court in his backyard, right? Um, or there's the, some of the areas that have a huge Venezuelan or, or uh, Spanish population, like in Miami and Houston, they're able to, to support uh, some clubs that have, have some courts. But you get away from those pockets, there's, there's not a lot around. Now, Lee, I'll let you run there on some of the places that we've, we've installed courts and open clubs. And how can people help? Like if people yeah. are listening to this podcast or watching the podcast, I mean, how can they join your company in building these courts? Well, you know, we've been talking to facilities, we've been talking to universities, and, you know, the basically the line is create the demand and we'll build the courts. So, so how do we do that? So we, we picked out some very strategic partners, selling partners, and I'll give you one, the Ritz-Carlton, uh, Key Biscayne, uh, Florida. Um, so that's a well-known brand, Ritz-Carlton, managed by Cliff Drysdale, put in three aluminum courts, which were the first aluminum courts in the U.S., and their program is just off the charts. Now that's specific. It's a great location. It's a great brand name, both on the operation side with Cliff Drysdale and Ritz Carlton. So that was a home run to begin with. We've been talking with the um, United States Tennis Association, USTA, to um, figure out how they can support. Um, because there again, going back to Padel is a complement to tennis. It's not going to draw people away from the sport. It's going to bring more people to racket. So it's how do we pick strategic partners around the country to, to buy into building courts. Once you build courts, then you have to certify the tennis pros that are going to teach the people. Because one of the very important things and the opportunity we have in the U.S. is we have the opportunity to start a sport. So if you think about it, how many other opportunities has, have people had in the past 20 years, 30 years to start a brand new sport? They haven't. I mean, think about it. Pickleball was, was started back in 1965. So everyone talks about pickleball saying, oh my gosh, it's this great sensation. It is, it's fun to play, everyone can play it, but it's been around for 50 some years. So it's not like it just started. So here we have an opportunity to bring a new sport in. So we need to build courts, quality courts like, like Scott's doing. We need to certify the professionals to teach the sport correctly. And then we need to get people to play it. So it's, it's kind of that, you know, which comes first. Um, we have we have the facilities on the hook. Some of them are ready to kind of pull the trigger and build courts. And we're really looking forward to a positive 2021 as we kind of come out of this crazy 2020. You know, no, that is really, I mean, honestly, it gave me goosebumps to, to talk about 
introducing a new sport. I mean, how many times do we get the opportunity to do that? You, 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 you know, know and, and maybe hacky sack whenever that started or whatever the you know. <laughs> <laughs> our our uh, this, our Spanish affiliate uh, offer Padel. They they like to tout and elaborating on what Lee said. They tout the 360 degree approach. We can't do the field of dreams method where you just build the court and expect people to just knock down your door and get on it and come play. They don't just come out of the cornfield and jump on a padel court. They, we have to reach out to them, get them to come try the sport. And, and what the way Lee mentioned by offering certifications, getting the padel champion at each club that's going to promote it. That is the difference between what we're doing and what anybody else that ever built a padel court in the United States is doing, is how we are reaching out. We're, we're you're like a magnet, and we're pulling people and getting them on the court so that they can try it, rather than just putting up a court, letting, letting a few people in the area who knew, know about the sport play it from their experience overseas. So we're, we're doing it. So the, my, I love seeing the people from the other racket sports try padel, mm -hmm. and, and they pick it up. But I get more joy. Like, do you give an example? Um, I get a lot when I get the people from the rowing from the rowing studio come out and they're on the padel court. They haven't picked up a racket in their life, and they they are they're enjoying the sport. They're playing it. We do a boot camp with the with the rowing people with the row zone the rowing studio, and when they come out and see that I'm there with the padel balls that day, they are like, "Yes, we get to, <laughs> we're we're playing padel what's today too." So, it's the it's not just the racket sports people. It's it's the runners, the bikers, you know, any anybody from the other sports. This is the, this is their avenue into being able to play a, a racket sport. So, look, Serena. Oh. One thing that you you had mentioned was how can the people watching or listening to this help? And those, well, first of all, go to go to YouTube and, and watch some points. And you're saying, oh my gosh, this is the greatest sport ever. I grew up playing tennis, and I love tennis. Play all of the other sports, but padel is kind of close to my heart because it's just so much fun. But how can everyone help? They can contact us, and we have a very good informational flyer which teaches people what the sport is and how to do it. So how do you join the other the 20 million people around the world playing this sport? Well, we send out a little brochure and you introduce it to your general manager or the owner of your club or someone that wants to build something in their backyard. And they are totally immersed in like, oh, my gosh, I want to try this sport. No matter where we go around the country and where we can find a sport, uh, a court, we have people coming out and said, I've never played this sport. I've watched it on YouTube. I've watched it on the computer and I want to try it. So those types of, that's how we spread it around the country. It's got to be a grassroots start where people say, I want this. I want this court where it is, and I want to talk to my local club, and we want to build it. Lee, Lee tell Serena how you, how you found out about the sport and the first time you played it. It's the same, it's the same situation. It, it is. I mean, the first time, I, I, um, I actually flew to the Bahamas for my 50th birthday party. I, I set up my own party. So I wanted to play this sport. And, and it was one of those, those where I tried to play it like tennis and realized very quickly that it wasn't tennis. It was very similar to tennis. It was as fun or more than tennis. And once I played it, I realized that, and this was five years ago, I realized that this was the sport. If we could get this to catch on in the United States, this will go wild. And as we've been working on it now for, for, for five years, it's, it takes a long time, but we're slowly getting that momentum. And, you know, what Scott has just, you know, at the grand opening of, of SVB in Tampa, um, we're experiencing it. I'll give you an example. This past weekend, our, our head, head marketing guy, Marcos Del Pilar, uh, ran a tournament, had 118 players in it, which was, believe it or not, the largest Fidel tournament yet in the United States. Wow. So this is type, the type of momentum. And for those of you out there say, well, geez, that's, that sounds small. But, but if, if it goes from zero to 118 and people are paying money and flying in from around the country because you're running a, a great um, tournament in a great sport, that's the type of traction we're looking for. Well, and it helps everything. I mean, then it helps your local community. It helps your economy. You're exactly. hiring the people to to build the court. So, I mean, it's a win-win all the way around. So, Lee, you had mentioned like um, – to get information. And we will, of course, include the link, but what, how do we contact you? What's the best Lee, way to contact 
it's Lee at all racket sports.com. Um, love to talk to anyone. And Scott and I will and we'll talk to anyone anywhere. We are so passionate about the sport. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> does, does this count as anywhere? Oh, the, the, I hope so. The, the other thing, the other thing we can do is we do know. I I think we have a list of exactly where every court in the United States is, and we can tell them where the nearest court to them is, or how we how we can get them there, or maybe make the arrangements that they could try the sport if depending where they are. If they are in Virginia or they're in New York, we can tell them where the nearest court is, how who to contact, and how to make arrangements. To you get know that on. would be great to get that list, and we can maybe include that list. On well, it, my it'll website. be one of the pieces, pieces. that, that okay. you have for you. Well, you you have to you have to remember, and this is what's so interesting. This is why I love doing this podcast with you. We're still at a point where ninety nine point nine percent of the people in the United States don't know what we're talking about. I know it's so exciting. I mean, it's really exciting. Like we are like <laughs> being, and that's why I love podcasts and I love journalism because sometimes, I mean, can you imagine a year from now that. And we can look back yeah. and we can reflect back on this yeah. podcast yeah. and see what happens within, sure. you know, like the next year. So let me ask you guys this, though. If there is not a court yet, and I say yet, can people start to, can we get the paddle and kind of play around or, you know, sure. would you recommend that? Yeah, in absolutely. The absolutely. I mean, you can always practice and play and bat the balls back and forth and everything like that. And when you get the chance to take a little road trip or a little vacation and come come to Pedelphia and 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 play or <laughs> down to SVB Tennis Center, sure, you you can do it. Um, the rackets are available at our partner website, playpedelusa.com. Playpedelusa.com. Uh, you can, you can see, see them all there. And yeah, I mean it's easy. It's easy enough, I and mean, you can walk out and ten, I at uh, at the tournament that that Lee referenced this weekend. We had all four courts were busy and had spectators around and and everything. Well, a lot of the players to warm up walked over and were playing on the pickleball courts with their with their padel rackets, just batting the ball back and forth, getting ready, warming up. Well, we've we've committed, as you know, our entire team to try Padel, <laughs> including the, our executive producer who's running it, the interns. I, I we're going to take a video. We're going to do it. Now, I'm not very coordinated, and I want to mention that. And your nephew is so humble and modest. But you and I were introduced mm -hmm. by James Tully, who's an Emmy Award winning anchor here in Tampa, Florida, and he said you have to meet my uncle, and we have to talk about Padel. <laughs> and so now I'm so excited. Now you have me talking about Padel. Padel, and we're going to make James try Padel with me. Well, James has already tried Padel. And he's really good, actually. I actually he's, followed him on Instagram and he, liked one of the one of his posts. James so. is <laughs> James is the James is the perfect example of what we see a lot of people that really they start and they're not sure. Get a little bit of instruction from a certified Padel professional like myself. <laughs> yes. um, you need to but, throw that in for sure. But. Uh, no, they, they pick and they pick it up so quick. And there's James can walk on a court right now with yourself, myself, and Lee, and we could have we could have a wonderful match together. And it's the it's fun for all of us. It, it's not one of those games where just because one person is really good and the other person isn't good, you can inter intermingle skill levels of players, and everybody's still going to enjoy playing the playing the game. And I think that's one of the real reasons why it is. If you're a, if you're a tennis player and you go on vacation and you want to play, you have to go to the places and see how you can find somebody of your skill level to play with. Well, it's not that way with Pidel. Well, we are really, really excited to try it. Were you going to say Every, something? Everyone Lee? can hit one of those wonderful shots that you see on, on, on YouTube. I mean, it's and for those of you out there that haven't gone, you have to go and watch some of these points because they're absolutely phenomenal. And the cool thing about it, you know, the first time that you hit it off the wall and it goes back over the net, you would say, oh my gosh, I'm the greatest player in the world. So it's it's one of those things. It's very self-satisfying. Well, we're really, really excited about it. And if, if you're in, you know, with, with where I usually end up, I'll, I'll quote one of my my good friend, Pat Shields, who who always likes to, who, who who said this first, but he's like, whenever we get done playing, he's like, I never had so much fun losing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's usually where, that's usually my side of the ball. I, I say that a lot when I when I come off the court. Well, it was so delightful <laughs> having you both on the podcast, and you look fabulous too in your Adidas gear. And if you said Lee, your birthday was five years ago when you turned fifty, which makes you fifty five right now, he was like, you look fantastic. Oh, you're so wonderful. Yes. Well, Padel keeps me young. 
See, there you go. Okay, that, that's all I need. That's all I need. All right, thank you so much. And that brings us to the end of another episode of On the Record. Thank you so much again, Scott Grow, Lee Spinagle, joining us from Idaho for sharing your story. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. You can follow me on all my social media platforms, and you can subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. Until next time, stay safe.